This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Friday, January 2nd. I'm James Spann. Pretty nasty today. Cold and wet. Noticeably warmer tomorrow. Then a chance of strong, maybe severe storms late tomorrow and tomorrow night. And Arctic air next week. A lot of things on the plate here. So let's go in there and tech talk about things. Want to see some sky cam shots? You probably know what you're going to see. And that's about it. That's the way it looks uh, across the entire state. That's a view coming from uh, Tus uh, Trustville this afternoon. Birmingham. Cold rain falling there. Decatur, you know the deal, clouds and rain. Even some elevated thunder today. Uh, big upper low coming out of the southwest United States, producing the nastiness today. And that will uh, set the stage for maybe some active storms across parts of the deep south uh, over the weekend. That was the radar at two, uh, 154 this afternoon. And again, we've noticed some uh, thunder from time to time, thunder and lightning. Uh, obviously, in a cold, stable air mass, the storms are not rooted down at the surface. They're elevated, but still uh, kind of a rattling type thunder you hear in the cold air mass. But tomorrow will be much warmer as we get back in the warm sector of the storm. Only in the 40s today, though, uh, Birmingham 48 at mid-afternoon, Tuscaloosa managing 51. But tomorrow, highs will be closer to 70 as we get back in the warm sector. Here's a look at the uh, watch warning map around the nation. We've got uh, messy weather in the western part of Texas, West Oklahoma, winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories there for icing conditions. Uh, we've got some uh, winter weather advisories over Montana uh, and a few other issues up in the northeast United States. And in Alabama, you see a few counties in the western part of the state. Those are river flood warnings for the uh, Tom Bigby and the Black Warrior. Check the convective outlook. This is the risk for the rest of the day and tonight. Uh, just a very small marginal risk over southwest Louisiana and southeastern Texas. However, tomorrow, the guys at SPC have expanded the standard slight risk as the warm surge will really uh, uh, push that warm sector north. We now have the standard slight risk over a pretty good chunk of Mississippi and parts of West Alabama. In Alabama, some of the cities involved in that would include Hamilton, Fayette, Tuscaloosa, Reform, Demopolis, uh, Jackson and Mobile, and a marginal risk for the rest of North and Central Alabama. And we'll take a look at the specific severe weather parameters here in just a second. The core threat would be late tomorrow and tomorrow night. And on day three, which is Sunday, a marginal risk for parts of Georgia and the Carolinas. Check the uh, QPF chart. This is the rain through Wednesday morning, and uh, this is showing rain amounts of at least two inches over much of North and West Alabama. There's a, a finer grid look at that. The uh, bullseye, about 2.4 inches near Columbus, Mississippi. But uh, the bottom line is this is suggesting some really good uh, two-inch rains over a pretty good chunk of north and central Alabama. Some spots could easily see three inches here, I think, based on the rain we've already had. All right, let's take a look. This is uh, tomorrow at noon off the 12Z GFS, and this is at 500 millibars. There's your trough lifting out of the southwest. This is 12 noon tomorrow, and we have a rather broad surface low that's over southern Missouri. And there's going to be a warm surge during the day. We break out in the warm sector as a warm front moves north of the state. You know, the sun might even break out at times tomorrow. It's not going to rain all day during the day, but occasional showers are likely, maybe some thunder, and a chance we reach 70. That'll be a huge change after today when we're stuck in the 40s all day. Now, this is midnight tomorrow night, 12 a.m. Sunday, the surface low north of Indianapolis and deepening down to 1,003 millibars with the uh, surface boundary coming down through central Mississippi. And this is the time we could see some strong storms. This is the same time. This is uh, midnight tomorrow night. But instead of looking at precipitation, we're looking at uh, instability. This is CAPE or convective available potential energy and these numbers are not overwhelming but they are a little higher on the 12 z runs uh, ramping up to over 500 joules per kilogram and that's sufficient for severe weather in, in cold season storms like this um, let's take a look at some of the severe weather parameters if you will at midnight tomorrow night this is the uh, low level jet the uh, wind velocities at 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet off the ground. That's pretty impressive. This has got a core jet of 50 to 60 knots coming through here, and that is certainly sufficient for severe storms. If nothing else, uh, strong, maybe damaging straight-line winds. This is the low-level shear, the bulk shear between the surface and 925 millibars, and we got about 30 knots. And again, you know, it's not overwhelming, but certainly that could support an up, uh, a rotating updraft in a few spots although the really higher values are northeast of the state. And this is the Energy Helicity Index, the EHI, and the good news here, it's under one unit, but of course this is a you know relative parameter. 
the bottom line is, uh, you know, clearly we could see some strong storms. This is the dew point surge at midnight tomorrow night. That's pretty impressive. The, the dew points are up in the middle 60s all the way to the Tennessee Valley. Uh, and that is pretty unstable air. The, the cape might be a little too low on the model output here. So I would say the window for this would probably open up about 6 o'clock tomorrow evening on the western side of the state. Uh, we'll say 6 p.m. tomorrow until 3 a.m. Sunday, that nine-hour stretch, a chance of strong to severe storms. Uh, the storms could produce strong, maybe gusty, damaging straight-line winds. There could be some hail and an isolated tornado. We can't rule out the possibility with those higher, low-level bulk shear numbers. So uh, something to watch for uh, tomorrow night. And then this is Sunday at noon. Everything is winding down. The rain should be south of Interstate 59. Uh, as the surface low moves up into Canada, and we have cold air advection. And again, we'll be up there close to 70 tomorrow, but Sunday we'll be in the 50s all day. And some folks up in the Tennessee Valley might even drop in the 40s. Here's a QPF update uh, from the uh, uh, GFS. And uh, this is suggesting rain amounts of 1 to 3 inches. We've mentioned that all along, and that looks like a pretty good call. So uh, uh, very wet, stormy at times, with the rain ending Sunday morning. Now... This is the synoptic scale look Sunday at noon. You can see that cold air advection. This is Monday of next week. Uh, pretty, you know, chilly day, but the good news, it'll be sunny. The high mid to upper 40s. We start the day below freezing. And this is Tuesday. We warm back up in the 50s. But on Wednesday, look at the trough deepening over the eastern U.S., and that's going to pull down some really cold air. Look at that. That's a 1,054 millibar high over the Dakotas, howling north winds. Uh, temperatures only in the 40s. The wind's going to make it feel colder, and by Thursday morning, it's going to be very cold. Uh, the latest uh, GFS is printing 17 for Thursday morning here. There's a look at the anomalies, and uh, you can see those uh, temperatures are expected to be 20 degrees below average around here, and maybe 30 degrees below average near Chicago. That might be a, a day with a high close to zero up there, very cold Arctic air. And then Friday, after a cold morning, we start to moderate. The high Friday afternoon should be around 50. Look, the temperature's coming off the ensemble. You can see the uh, uh, really cold air settling in, but it's short-lived next week. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, yes, very cold. Uh, on the ensemble, it's got a high of 36 on Thursday with a low of 20 uh, early Thursday morning. I think we could see upper teens in there, but we you know, go back up in the low 50s soon after that. Here's the end of the forecast on the 18th of January, troughing in the west, ridging in the east, and that doesn't look especially cold. Check the Arctic uh, oscillation, and you see it tries to get down toward the neutral line, but then it goes right back up into positive territory toward mid-month, and the same thing for the North Atlantic oscillation. And as long as those stay positive, it's going to be hard to get really cold air down here for any extended <coughs> length of time. Just something we'll be watching as we go through the winter season here. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog. Next video here, uh, Monday morning at 7, Brian Peters, the man that looks like Colonel Sanders, or maybe Santa Claus. We'll have the updates tomorrow and Sunday. And if you can't catch us this evening on the live stream of the television side, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and God bless.